Don Copeland, let me hit the audio button so you can actually hear what I'm saying. <laughs> we'll start recording, but nice. I've been talking for about five minutes without the audio turned on. So if you couldn't hear me, then count, you know, your, that's blessings. count your blessings. Hi, my name is Mark Stevenson. That is Don Copeland. And what we are going to do tonight is do a little embroidery 101. What we find is that a lot of the, the webinars that we do are for the, the more educated consumer. And now what we're going to do is kind of like break down the differences between a consumer machine industrial machine and, and just show you the basics. The first thing I am going to do though is switch back over to the screen here and do my little commercial for some of our some of the ways that you can participate with Coldesi. And the first one is the Custom Apparel Startups Facebook group. The guys here are sick of me talking about this but we've got 685 people on here all of which are kind of either just starting in the business or <coughs> Uh, thinking about starting in the business, it's a great place to ask questions. You'll see there's a, there's a picture of Don behind the scenes from our last webinar. There are advertisements for um, a variety of different projects that we're working on. Articles that will help you start your business. There's links to success stories. This poor guy was going to buy a used, machine, a used uh, Melco embroidery machine until we all talked, to, talked him out of it. Um, there's a lot of great information here for you guys to, uh, to sign up and get. So just do that. If you prefer to listen to information about getting into the business, we do have the CAS podcast. That is an audio program for custom apparel startups. So basically, you can hit this button and listen to our presentations online. I mean, we did like 45 minutes on biggest mistakes starting an embroidery business. We did sales, simple sales tips for small businesses. So it's a great thing to listen to in the car. You can download it onto your iPhone or Android device and just give it a listen. The other thing I will talk about is the YouTube group. We have more than 700 videos on our YouTube group now. Um, go to Cold Essie Coleman. Hang on, I'm going I'm to click that up for you. Go to YouTube.com, Cold Essie Coleman, and subscribe. So every time we add a new YouTube video, you will get it, just like we did with the most recent um, webinar recording that I just put up there today. And the last thing I'll tell you about is, uh, is our support site, which is also fantastic. There are not that many companies that actually want you to go and visit their technical support and training sites, but we encourage you to do that. Okay, now that I have talked for long enough, I think, um, I think Don's got his shirt buttoned. I'm going to click this over and give it back to Don Copeland. Don. That would bore you. No, I'm kidding. I, I, it is when you've heard it as many times as we have. But no, I want to thank Mark for it. Uh, he, uh, we, we joked about it today. This is my second webinar today. This is Mark's second webinar today. But Mark does all the webinars. And uh, he's making stuff disappear this, from the this screen. This is my last one, though. This is his last <laughs> one today. Um, no, thank you guys for taking some time out of your, your schedules. To spend the time with us this evening, afternoon, wherever you're at if you're on the West Coast. Uh, you know, we just want to kind of break through a lot about, you know, people get intimidated by a commercial embroidery machine and we're finding here in the last, especially the last year, year and a half, a lot of companies that are coming into this are coming in from, maybe they're already doing decorated apparel, a lot of people are coming to the embroidery marketplace from heat applied. They're doing a lot of uh, cut vinyl, uh, maybe buying transfers. And or they have a Janome at home. And they have a home machine. Fun. You know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of different directions people are coming into it and they get intimidated by this machine when it shows up. And what are you running, Mark? <laughs> I can't see myself. I know. That's that's. I was hoping that was a benefit. No, no, no. I want to be. I'm getting ready to turn the machine. I want okay, to be able go, to see the machine. Go ahead. All right. So, would you hand, somebody handcuff Mark again, please? All right. No. So, one of the things I like to do when I demonstrate a machine to somebody live is kind of try to break down a little bit of the barrier or the fear. When you look at this thing from the front, it's pretty intimidating. All these needles, this big head on it, these electronics and whatnot. But the reality check is, is that when you turn the machine, I hope nothing falls off. It looks like your mother's, your grandmother's, or your sewing machine when you look at it from the side. Because that's what it is. It's a great big sewing machine. It's a cool sewing machine, but it's a great big sewing machine that happens to line up with a head that indexes back and forth. There we go. Is that turned about right? Good. That, that lines right in line with a single needle, so you're sewing one color at a time. That's the option to change needles. Don't be intimidated by a commercial embroidery machine. It's not really that much different than your mother's sewing machine or even your sewing machine that you have in your shop. Um, I guess, you know, we, I want to kind of let you guys drive this webinar because we don't know exactly what you have. So please, at any time, 
Oh, so Mark's giving me an agenda now. <laughs> you know, we're going to talk a bit about the difference between commercial and consumer. But at any time you guys have questions about this machine specifically, com commercial embroidery itself, or comparing commercial and home machines, please let us know. Um, one of the things that, that we've kind of directed here is comparing what we're running into most frequently when we're selling these machines to people is what we can call the consumer machines. Uh, we like to use the word prosumer because it's really hard to call something consumer that is more expensive than a commercial machine. Or a small that's what car. It is. Or, or a small, small car, car. Um, you know, or in Mark's case, one of the trailers in his trailer park. You know, it's very much so like that, right? Um, <laughs> uh, basically, when you start with, with a, a commercial machine like the Avance, price point around $12,000, you start to, to drop down into a, a, a marketplace where the, uh, I'm going to say the two big Bs, the babies, Baby Locks and Brothers, which are basically an OEM version of the same machine, and they're going to be in the same price range. And so, kind of to give you guys a breakdown of the differences between the machines, there are a lot of cool features on the home machines, and I don't want to take away from them. However, they're not really commercially applicable. And the ones that are, that are really cool are ones that if they break, you're going to throw the machine away, some of the, the cameras and lighting and stuff that they have. Man, you talk fast. I do. Okay. Did I mention I'm going on vacation tomorrow? If you so have any, if you have have me a 15-minute webinar. Right? <laughs> if you have any questions about what Don is saying right now, just, just type it in. I'm sorry there aren't subtitles. There we go. So, anyway, now I'm going to talk like this. There you go. When you compare a home machine, a consumer machine, high-end consumer machine, to an Avant, say 1501C. The basic differences are going to come down to some, some practical things and some things you may not think about. Number one, a commercial machine is going to have a construction that is designed to run more than you want to work. Best way to describe it. This machine will more, work more hours in a day than you want to. As long as you keep it oiled in the proper locations, it is absolutely going to outwork you. A home machine, they're typically only designed to run maybe 20 hours a week, and if you actually quandary the people that sell these machines, if they're honest with you, they'll tell you that. Four or five hours a day is about the max. Number two, number of needles. Now that is, over the last two or three years, that's changed, so it's not as radical as it used to be, but most of the commercial, um, the, the home machines that you're going to look at are going to have either six or ten needles. The Avance 1501C is going to be a 15 needle single head machine. So it is going to have five to nine more needles. The sewing field on the Avance 1501C is going to be much larger than the standard sewing field on one of the home machines. Um, I looked up, thank you. There you go. Yes, they can. That is, a, that, that is big enough to even do a Bubba size shirt right there. That's a 15 by 21 inch hoop, all right? The biggest hoop that you can get for one of the Baby Lock Brothers or brother machine is a 14 by 14 and by the way this is standard theirs is an option right. right another thing is is the machines are designed for production which means that we're going to give you two of every size of hoop that you need to have for production we have we give you 11 included hoops one of the monsters here that we just showed you and then there are going to be four different sizes of shirt front hoops um, I have them here actually we've got one on the machine this is our largest, a 21 centimeter. We have a 15 centimeter hoop on the machine. We have a 12 centimeter. And we have your 9 centimeter. We also have a 12 by 12 jacket back, which is basically a 12 inch, it's also got a 300 by 300, 12 inches by 12 inch square type back for jacket backs. And we also include the driver to do caps and the wide cap frames. When you buy a prosumer machine, that is optional. When you buy a prosumer machine, they come with four standard hoops, one of each size, and it doesn't include the largest size. Every one of those things, when you hear me say that, you need to be hearing this sound, ka-ching, 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 because every time you add that on, you're buying additional hoops. You're buying a cap driver. You're buying the hooping gauge. You're buying the, the, the cap attachment to do the, the driver to do everything that you would need to add on that you would want to to match up to this machine is an add-on with those machines. You're going to find that difference is also in the software. This is where it really gets crazy. The softwares that they sell for the home machines are actually more expensive than the package we're going to have Sean show you here in a few minutes, which is our Liberty, which we 90% of the machines we sell go out of here with. And you're going to find that 
a lot of times you have two, three, I've talked to people who have as much as $4,000 into a home digitizing software for a home machine. Wow. All right, which is crazy. I mean, we don't talk a lot about the numbers on our machines, but you're only looking at when you buy with the machine an $800 upgrade to add digitizing software. We'll have Sean show you here in a minute that comes with the machine. Lastly, is it going to be the supply package? When you buy the, uh, the Avance, one of the things you're going to get, we're going to give you 65 of these little puppies here, which are 1,000 meter spools of thread, so you have a lot of comparison. You're going to get a full set of bobbins. This is a gross of our Coleman and Company brand bobbins. You're going to get you're going to get scissors, you're going to get tweezers, you're going to get everything that you need to get going. <laughs> tweezers, I mean, it's like, I feel like I won, right, you know? And you're going to get a, 100 needles, which is 50 of each size. I mean, type, this is a round, these are sharps. Wait, time out. I may have we have to take a look at, this is Vanna White. This is the guy that, he's <laughs> actually just, he's trying to be undercover over there, right. but. <laughs> he really exists, right? I'm yeah. Not just, let me pull a rabbit out. His of my picture hand. was on the webinar invitation. That's all you get to see. We, uh, we include Solvi. And uh, for those of you who haven't done embroidery in the much, Solvi is a topical that you put down when you're sewing something that has some loft to it. If you're doing uh, polar fleece or if you're doing um, towels, you know, like terry cloth and whatnot, this allows you to sew over it so that it doesn't poke through the embroidery and it's, it's actually water based. I mean, it's, it breaks down in water. I'm assuming it's probably some kind of gelatin or something like that. But once you wash it, it just dissolves away and you've already sewn over top and kept that fleece down. We're going to include uh, backing. We have a whole roll of cutaway backing, which is what you most usually use on shirts. And then we have tearaway backing. Did I get those right? Hey, I did. <laughs> and the tearaway backing, which is used for inside of hats typically or something you're not going to wear. Because tearaway backing is kind of uncomfortable unless you're doing it like in a jacket or something. Um, and this is cool. You know, this is the stuff that we do that may not mean a whole lot to you. You guys can't really see this. But this is this just a, a quick sheet. Hey, if I'm doing a PK shirt, what do I use? All right, a 7511 ballpoint needle with a 8835 cutaway backing. And we have a list here of about 15 different materials with the recommended needle and the recommended backing. That's huge for somebody who's getting started. And, it, and it's, it's where we really kind of separate from the, the field. And on top of that, you know, this kind of segues in to our training and support. Um, Sean, who will be coming up here in a minute, is just one example. He's kind of our head of Avance Tech. But between our three main embroidery technicians, they've got something like 80 years, is that what we figured out, of practical yeah. embroidery experience, right? On top of that, the gentleman you saw earlier here is our, happens to be our sales manager. Alex Duran has over 10 years as a technician on yeah. embroidery. And so when you're buying into the Avance family, you're buying into a group of people who know the industry. I have 25 years experience in the apparel industry. You're talking to people who've been doing this for a long time. Most importantly, when you're talking to the techs, the techs themselves have done embroidery. Right, wait, and this is not like people that have been working at home sewing right. pillows for their families. Right. These are people that have run businesses, worked shops, worked on real commercial equipment. It's not the corner embroidery store. Exactly. And so, you know, these guys, you can call them up and they're not just going to tell you push F5. All right? Well, what they're going to tell you is, oh, you're trying to do this, try hooping it with this type of backing. Or maybe you need to double, double back this, you know, at an angle. Or maybe you need to use a topical on it. Or, hey, maybe these hoops that you've got aren't quite right for it. You want to go to a magnetic hoop. Or you want to go to a clamping system or something like that. Huge part of the difference between us and them. Another big difference is when you buy this machine from us, this is kind of on the low end of price point products that we sell. As opposed to when you buy it, go into that little commercial store where you, you buy your sewing machines and your threads and stuff like that from, you're buying the most expensive product they sell. They probably sell three, maybe four of them a month. And there's one guy in the shop that knows how to work on them and knows anything about them. Right. All right? When you buy from us, I'm going to sell three or four or five of these a month, just me. Alex is going to sell them. We're going to sell 25 or 30 of these a month. This is what we do dealing with people in this marketplace. And we're not bragging about that aspect of how many we sell. But it's just a stated fact that this is what we do. We deal with commercial businesses, people who are in the commercial apparel decoration industry, and we help them build and grow their businesses. The family we work for, I'm going to segue into that a little bit, the family we work for has been in the apparel decoration business here in Tampa for over 40 years. And they still maintain a business that does embroidery that services McDill Air Force Base. I'm pointing that way because that's about, what, a mile from us? Yeah. They still do it. And that's what the family does. And they understand how important it is to take care of people, have the support and service and training that's needed. 
So Don, why don't you run through the pieces and parts on the machine? I know you kind of showed it on the side, but what is somebody going to see in this that they're not going to see in a consumer machine? You're not going to see in a consumer machine? Well, um, <laughs> cover some of the needles. <laughs> Um, you know, we have a laser, it's an optional laser trace here. You're not going to get a laser trace on most home machines. This allows you quickly, and Sean will do it when we do a quick run through, allows you to outline your design. What do you mean no? Right? Um, you know, the lighting system, sounds a little bit crazy, but I'm an old guy, right? The, the, the lighting system on this is actually behind the needles. I don't know who came up with this idea to come up with these really cool front lights on, on embroidery machines. I need to see the hole from behind, you know, I got to have that. This gives you, makes it easy, it's an adjustable light. Again, sounds like little stuff, but it's not. When you get into production, being able to use these things practically is important. Um, you're going to have, you know, the, the, this, again, because there's 15 needles instead of 10. Right. Uh, you know, some commercial machines, though, I mean, some uh, home machines don't have a color display. Most of them do nowadays, all right? One thing that's different with these machines is they are networkable as opposed to a home machine, which you're going to either direct connect with a USB or just going to load with a thumb drive. I think some of them use SD cards, don't they? Mm -hmm. A little SD card reader. With this, you can actually hook this up, set it up on a network. So you have a network maybe running your house already. You just drop in your Ethernet cable and you can send your design straight to the machine or multiple machines with your Ethernet cable. That's another difference you're going to see. How about, the stand, design, how about the, design storage as well? You're going to hold up to 200 designs, up to 2 million stitches, right? Um, so again, you're a commercial business. You're not just doing, you know, bunny rabbits on your kid, your your, your grandbaby's onesies and whatnot. So you're going to want to save some of your important jobs here for regular customers. You can once you load a design in here, you can leave it in here, and it'll even save your sew sequence. So as long as you don't change your thread colors and those needles, every time you pull it up, it's ready to sew. Um, Speed-wise, the the maximum that you're going to get out of a home machine is a thousand stitches per minute. And they'll even tell you if you do caps, don't go over 600. In fact, when you put them in cap mode, they won't allow you to go over 600 stitches per minute. Now, we tell people usually 650, 700 on caps, but you could sew caps with 1,000 stitches per minute if you wanted to. It would be ugly. <laughs> and it would be needles breaking, but you're picking up another you know, 100, 150 stitches per minute, which on a design that's 5,000 stitches, that's a big number. Is there a question there? No, just someone said we have a white screen. Jim, I don't know what to tell you. I think, does anybody else just see a white screen or is everybody seeing the video? Uh, I like Scott. <laughs> Scott sounds like he's had one of these before. Home machines have very poor resale value. That's a great point. When folks get in to, to starting into this, they say, I'm going to just dip my toe into it. So I'm going to buy, even to buy a six needle um, home machine that maybe costs them 9,000 bucks. Oh, I'm just going to dip my toe. I don't want to spend 12. Let's, that's, we'll talk about the logic of that later. So they, they dip in with that. And then six months later, they're calling me back saying, hey, dude, will you take this in the trade? And I'm like, no. You need to go sell this on one of the granny sites where they do, you know, they, they want to, to, to buy quilting sites. Did I say Ouch. granny sites? No, but you're going to, you're going to go out to one of these sites and it's this 9,000. The comments made by Don are not reflected of the, uh, of the cold SE company. Okay. Did I mention that I start on vacation tomorrow? Yeah. Um, but no, you're going to go on one of these sites and you're going to find this machine that sold last year retail for $9,000. And if you're getting $4,500 for one of those on one of these, there, there are tons of these uh, forums and sewing sites where the, the women who've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on machines, they like come together and, and they, they'll sell them on, you know, they'll share designs and whatnot. And, and you, you lose half your money in one year. With this machine, you buy this machine for two years, we're going to give you 100% back towards one of the beasts like this one I'm leaning on. We'll show you here in a little bit, which is a forehead machine. That's a big deal for somebody who's getting started in a business is knowing that the money you're putting into your equipment is money well invested, and five years down the road, it's not going to be worth 10% of what it is. Understand, I've been in this here at Coldesi for it's my 11th year. In the 11 years I've been here, there's been one significant change in commercial embroidery machines, and that's this. How do I put my designs into the machine? USB as opposed to floppy drive. That's really the only major change there's been in commercial machines over this this last 11 years, and probably if you go back further, probably 15 years. All right, the machines sew at the same speed, they sew at the same quality, you maintain them the same way, 
The sewing fields are virtually the same. They've come up a little bit. This is a really big sewing field we showed you for a commercial machine. And we do do a better job on small fonts than most companies. We do. Yeah, that has nothing to do with timing, but <laughs> we I'm do a great it. job. <laughs> Mark, Mark, you cited, it's been a long time since we said something good about the Avance. It really so is. To... No, but we're, we're comparing the, the differences in the machines. You know, so that's one of the big differences. You're buying a machine that is an investment into your business. This machine, 10 years from now, as long as you've taken care of it and kept it oiled and whatnot, you're going to find that you're going to be able to, to keep running the machine is the same. People who've maintained their machines from 10 years from now, you cannot tell the soap quality difference between a 10-year-old machine and a brand-new machine is well maintained. True. So, so why don't we, because Mark's starting to get that look on his face. I am. Why don't we, <laughs> why don't we jump in? We're going to show the software a little bit. I yep. want to have Sean come up. The software we're going to show you is called Stitch Era Liberty. All right? And this is an upgrade package that most people buy to go along with the system. And if you haven't done digitizing before, you're going to be surprised as how, how well and how easy it is to use. We have a question. Does the Avance sew a tight fill stitch? Sean? Sean? Does the Avance show a tight so a tight fill stitch. Hang, hang yeah, in the natural yeah. design. Here we go. Let's um, let me turn the camera back on. It's over there. This is actually Getting designed. closer. Getting closer. Okay, if is that tight enough for you? How's that? This is actually a design that we did. How many stitches, Sean? One hundred sixty-five thousand. I think we turned this over. We, we may have turned this over five times during a three-day trade show, but this is a, this is actually digitized in Liberty mm -hmm. by Sean. And sewn on this machine in Nashville, or was that a, on the single heads? Single head. That was a single head. Head. Okay, we were doing it on both designs. Okay. So does that answer your question? Okay. All right. To the screen. Here we go, Sean. You want to you want to talk it over? Or you want me to talk it over? Go ahead. All right. I showed you how to do this. I'm going to randomly whip, whip my mouse around the screen. No, we're going to bring in. Uh, you know the typical thing. This is a, is this a JPEG we're going to bring in? Okay, BMP file. So high mean, resolution, high resolution BMP file. It's what we call an index BMP or an index JPEG. It's got four or five different colors. Sean's brought it in. All right, and we have a couple different options of how we can actually address this. You can use auto digitizing, but what Sean's going to show you is how he would go in and actually digitize it by hand using his Bezier tools, and then he's going to address the area. So he goes to his uniform area. With a pattern fill, he's going to select, you can choose multiple pattern fills. First thing he's going to do is he's going to trace this design because it is a bitmap, it doesn't consist of lines. He's done that, and now he's going to go for it. So you see the nodes, the white dots there? Bang, he just selected that area, it's now traced, and he's filling it. Bingo. We do this, this cool cat eyes on there. Selected the eyes. Now, we want to just go ahead and keep these eyes the same color on this cat. So even though they're different colors, he selected it, but the color he chose to fill it in is the same. So you want to give him a preview real quick? Look at that. Oh, that's cool. All right, pattern filled okay. cat. It show him, I want to his glasses. I like that pattern, but I'd like him to be angled about 45 degrees. Why don't you show him how you could angle that? So what Sean's doing is actually, this is actually controlling the sew direction. That pattern was going north-south, and now he's kind of making it go more southwest to northeast type of approach. All right, and then when he does a preview, you'll see the other ones. He tilted inward. All that to control. Now, Sean, what if I wanted to put a, the, the black, I wanted those to be satin stitches, like an outline around that cat. How would you do that? This is column stitch. Column stitch, another name for, a, you, you'll, you'll sometimes hear people call it a zigzag, but it's really, a, it, it's also called a satin stitch. It's basically what you think of if you haven't done embroidery. The thing you think of you most commonly see for lettering is just a single stitch back and forth across. But what he's actually doing is he's going back, and it, every time you click, it's, it's going to the opposite side, and it's actually drawing the outline. He's going to do a, a, a fill on this with it. And I'm not going to make him go all the way around. I'll let you get down to the whisker. How about all right. that? Hey, we've got a question while he's doing that. Does it come with any clip art or stock designs? Good question. Uh, you know, basically, and, and Mark kind of alluded to in the wording there, um, Clip art for the embroidery industry is called a stock design. What that means is it's already stitched out, has all the stitches to it, and yes, as a matter of fact, it does. It comes with two different types. You can get our Panto stock design package, which is a little over 4,000 uh, designs, and you're also going to get a subscription for two months to Dakota Collectibles, which is the industry standard. They're, they're the Mac Daddies of digitizing for this industry. For two months, you can download up to 100 designs that are yours to keep and use, and keep going. You get 
per month. Yeah, it's 100 per month. Yeah, you got to download 100 per month for the two months. And I encourage you, even if you don't have something to do with them, if you're in a marketplace, if you're in the golf industry, go down, go up each month and download 100 designs that have to do with golf. If you're in Pennsylvania, download deer heads, right? You know, if you happen to be on uh, and uh, out in South Carolina on the, the the you know the Outer Banks or something like that, download fishing stuff, download beach stuff, whatever it is. If you're doing work for the police and the fire department, download Caduceus's. Download those; they're yours to use whenever you need to. And and you'll probably find that after you've done it, you probably want to sign up for their subscription because it's a great deal as well. But all those are included with the machine, along with when you get this software, you're gonna get 60 fonts as well. We'll show you here in a minute. Go ahead. Sorry, John. Did That's I okay. These are your pattern fills. And as you see these, you can see them pretty closely there on the screen. What it does, just the way that it sews out, and you'll see that some of them, we hit a point where there's a lock on them somewhere. <laughs> but there's quite a few of them. You can pick any of these pattern fills. You see these ones with locks? Those are all ones that are available for purchase for later on. And all of these patterns, you can do the same thing Sean did there, controlling the direction direction of the sew. Let me choose, uh, uh, I guess I hit my OK button. There you go. Yeah. You guys can't see what he's moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You see the different patterns. Those pattern fills, those are all included standard with the software. Are there any questions on the software at the moment? I don't know if I see any questions there, Mark. Did you do any text? We have any text. 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 All right, so we're going to take text now. There's 60 standard fonts that come with the package. You have to choose between a digitized font and a true type font. If you have true type fonts in your system, for those of you who don't know what that means, the resident fonts that you would have. Uh, for your word or something like that. You can pull those in and use them. There's also 60 pre-digitized fonts as well. And uh, there's a question, a uh, good question that came up from Samuel. Uh, the software works on Windows, um, as does all digitizing software pretty much in the industry. All apparel decorating yeah, software, almost all, pretty much. Well, any software, I've been in the industry, like I said, 25 years. Any specialty software that drives machines pretty much is going to be PC-based. Um, it does work on a standard. We can give you the specs on what you need on your PC. And the software, uh, Lisa's asking, when you buy it with the machine, it's $799. If you choose to just buy it outright uh, without the machine, it's $995. So you save $200 bucks by buying it. Back to our story. Um, <laughs> Sean's like, what do I do with that screen? All right, so we're going to bring in, let's just bring in a digitized font, okay? So Sean's grab, he's going to type in some lettering, ugly cat or something like that. Okay, kitty cat. Doesn't have spell check, obviously. All right, he's chosen his font, as you can see there. I like, Sean is actually doing, aha, auto syntax. It does have a spell check, right? And don't want to use it right now because he spelled cat wrong. Kitty, kitty cat wrong. Um, and, and one of the things, if you would show, show them the difference in uh, the, the jump stitches here on how they jump from letter to letter. All right, well, let's say real quick they want to arc the spell okay. kitty cat. There you go. We'll go ahead and just bend it up. And we will shrink it back down. Place where we need All to. real time. Bang. What is done? Kitty cat. You see the jump stitches here are between letters. You know, if I was sewing this on a PK, probably the only thing I would do is I would just trim between words. And as you see up near the top here, Sean quits playing with, there we go. You can go down here and go to trim between words. Bang. And now you see that jump stitch between kitty and cat is gone. If I was doing this on something that was a little bit finer, maybe on a, a hanky, like a bridal hanky or something like that, not that I would put a kitty cat on it, I can go in and tell it to trim between letters. The default would be to trim between lines of text. Now, again, we're, we're basing this as a 101 class. Why would you do that? Right. It's about time. Embroidery is all about time. The more that you can keep this machine sewing, the better you are. I mean, and we jokingly say, if it ain't making noise, it ain't making money. That's why we give you two hoops to get it changed over. But when it's trimming, <laughs> yes. it's making noise. Right. That's not making you money. So, literally, if I were to take that there, a trim might weigh 15 seconds or so, 10 is 15 seconds. So, most. if I were to leave the, the not trim between K and the I and the I and the T, there's one, two, three, four, five, six trims right there. I just wasted a minute and a half, let's say, just on the word kitty cat. Doesn't sound like a big deal. If I'm doing a hundred piece order, it's a big deal. That's yeah, it's two up. and a half hours right. that I've wasted just on those trims that nobody is ever going to notice. We've got another good question, Don. Mm -hmm. How much would you charge for this design? That is the ugliest design. I would give it to them. <laughs> it um, cool I mean, how big is that design? He is roughly uh, 3.73 inches by 3.36 inches. 
and has 7,053 okay. stitches. And probably be a little bit more by the time we satin them out. That That'd probably be a 9,000, say 10,000 stitch design by the time we put satins all the way around. 10,000 stitch design. What you're going to typically try to do, and this is, this is where you've got to work into the mindset of, of billing for this stuff. When this machine is running and making noise, I want it making $35 to $50 an hour for the embroidery. <coughs> all right? So this is a 10,000 stitch design. And I'm going to run the machine at 800 stitches per minute on this probably. So say 12 minutes, and you're going to have about a 10% overage for the trims and the tops. Right? So this is going to be a 12-minute design. So I'm going to turn my machine over five times an hour on this. I'm going to bill anywhere from seven to ten dollars to do this, plus the cost of the garment. Right. The All right. Correct. It's a twofold thing. Your client doesn't have to know this, but you're billing for two things. You're billing for the product they're buying, which is the shirt, the hat, the towel, whatever it is. Yeah. And then you're billing for machine time on your embroidery machine. So let's say you were putting this onto a, I don't know, some kind of towel. You know, you're going to embroider these onto a towel. And you got two dollars into the blank towel. You're probably going to charge four for the towel, doubling the cost of the towel, and then charge ten bucks for the embroidery. Bada bing, you're good to go. It's a twelve dollar towel, fourteen dollar towel. They're happy. Now, obviously, part of what you do is, if as the quantities go up, you are going to reduce down a little bit your your markup on either the embroidery or on the garment mm -hmm. or the item itself. But that's completely up to you. Understand that you would rather do an order of twenty four than twenty four orders of one. Right. right, because you kick it in the butt once and it goes and you're just feeding it, right? If I have to start up 10 different jobs, I'm going to waste three or four minutes loading the design, getting everything set up. So I'd rather do 24 than do 24 separate, do one of 24. Don, the next question is, how do you know how, how many stitches are in a design? Cool. Uh, Sean can show you right down here in the bottom, on the bottom left side of the screen, right down there. It's telling us it's 7,053. Now, how do you know in a job that you're getting ready to sew out? Number one, when you load it into the machine, it will tell you how many stitches. Number two, when you get done, you actually can generate a sheet from inside of the software that you can use to when you take to go over to your machine, and it's going to tell you how many stitches are in the design. It's going to tell you the sew sequence. It's going to tell you, if you told it, what colors for each of the sews and the sew sequence. So that's pretty straightforward. You're going to find that in the corporate world where you're doing identity type of things for shirts, and stuff. Most of your designs are going to fall in the 8,000-ish, maybe 10,000 stitch design category. Um, that's why people get creative and if you're doing a shirt that's black and it has black lettering on it with a white outline, they may not embroider the black on the inside, they'll just do the white outline because that fill stitch on the inside might take up another minute and a half, two minutes. So it's about being creative and minimizing. Don, we got a basic question. Why do you want more needles? Why do you want more needles? That's a good question because you mean more needles from this? No, you know, on, on like the a 15 needle machine sure. instead of a six or a. Single. It's not necessarily about being able to do an 11 color design that's a pain to do on a 10 needle machine. Okay. It's about having more bullets in the gun. And what I mean is, is when I come to a machine that has 15 needles on it, right? The likelihood of me having the right color on this machine is 50 percent better than it is on a machine with 10 needles. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but again, time is money and embroidery. So if you already have your core colors on here. And this is where, Mark, you want to step in with the disclaimer again? You take the core colors, the colors that you use all the time, the colors that are named by men, red, blue, black, white, yellow. The opinions of the speaker at tonight's <laughs> presentation are not that of everybody at Cold Essie. All right. And then you take the, the colors like sea foam that were named by women, or sunset, or sea breeze, or fuchsia, or puce. Or whatever, and you put them on the outside. Twofold reason for that is the core colors on the inside you're not going to need to get at. Black and white, every machine, and if you look at our machine, our black and whites are very small. We've sewn a lot of them out. So you're going to put your colors on the inside and then not change them out, and then go to your colors you are going to change to the outside. So if I have my nine or ten core colors in here, I'm good to go on 90% of what I'm going to sew, right? If you have one of these home machines, you have ten core colors, you got no room. Right. I can dedicate one of my needles over here to sewing metallics. Put a metallic thread on it, set my tensioning for metallic, and not ever worry about it, and still have four more needles to sew with than the guy who buys a 10-needle machine. Yeah, Scott, and Scott, uh, Scott says that uh, you get to go from job to job quicker. Much easier to jump from yeah. job to job. It's about time, guys. Embroidery is about time. Uh, did it, oh, it's a question I think here for Sean. You yeah. mentioned that this design you would lower the stitching speed 
How do you know what the speed you would have? Okay. That's part of your training, really. The guys are going to teach you based on the item you're sewing, based on the complexity of the design, uh, based on the type of thread. Most of the time we're sewing here with poly th polyester thread, but if you had a job you're doing rayon, some people will use rayon when they're doing bride tanky thread. Well, plus, plus, even if you're doing a satin, a satin stitch, fill stitch, you set the machine to sew at 800 stitches a minute, it's going to speed up or slow down depending on what stitch you're sewing. So 800 would be a, a medium, and it would either slow down for a fill stitch, running stitch would speed back up to 800. Yeah, I think it's a cruise control. If you have cruise control on your car and you've got it set to 70 miles an hour, you go up a hill, the car doesn't stay at 70 the whole way up. It's, it's, it's trying right. to stay at 70, right? <laughs> Um, there's a question here about uh, PES files you already have, thousands of them. Um, uh -oh. What you do, Christy, is actually does, can we in, import PA, PESs here? Yes, you okay. can. You can bring in PESs here. You also, there are packages out there if you have any of the other home formats that maybe we don't have the ability to import. Uh, one that comes to mind for me is Buzz Tools. Mm -hmm. That's just an aftermarket, relatively inexpensive package that really is good at bringing in oddball or home proprietary type formats and converting them into DS team formats, which is what all commercial machines use. Any more questions on the software while well, we have Sean in the software mode? Nope. nope. Okay. All Great. Good. All right. Parts of the machine. Parts of the machine. Yeah, we want to go, hey, now we want to go, it's a good question. There was some description of the parts of the machine. I'm going to let Sean kind of point out some of the basic components of the of the, the single head embroidery machine because that's why he's here. He's our technician, right? Wait, there's one last question on the software. Uh, can you import vector files? Yes. Yes, yes. that's preferred. Yes. yes. Vector files, what, what Sean did is he vectorized that file before he filled it. If you saw him click on it, it said auto trace. Auto tracing is vectorizing of a bitmap right. file. So if it was already vectorized, it would save the step. You know what? One more thing about the software is that you can also end up, if, if you start with an embroidery, you can end up doing rhinestones or spangles and basically use everything that you've learned to digitize an embroidery to do for the rhinestones or cams. designs for, for bling. Okay. Uh, is, it, is it compatible with pallet or PES file? I'm not sure what pallet is, but we, we actually just did a PES. The machine is not. The software. the software is, which then will put it out in the format that all commercial machines use, which is DST. Correct. Okay, parts of the machine. All right, what we got here is uh, you got the stand, which comes standard. Uh, which machine. most commercial machines do and most home machines And it's don't. on wheels. And it's, it's on, on wheels, wheels. nice-size casters. Uh, you have the machine, which weighs roughly 180 pounds. Two people can pick it up move it. You go into a trade show, grab two people. All you've got in the back is the power cord, which plugs into a 110 outlet. You have the light, which Don went over earlier, which is on a snake light that you can position anywhere. We have the laser that is an optional. Um, inside here, you can see we've got the 15 take-up levers, uh, 15 uh, needle bars, pressure feet. You've got all the hoops that come with the machines. The, all the hoops will fit in the arms situated as is. The only one you'll have to move it for is, of course, the large jacket back hoop which you will then take these arms, and you can't really see it from the screen, but you would place them in the slots to the farthest position, and that fits the hoop. We also have a table over here. Which is right here. If yeah. you were doing a really large item or heavy item, this actually slips right in here, and what it does is it helps to bear the weight. I'm going to snap it all the way in, but it bears the weight of that hoop if you have a heavy item, like a blanket or a heavy jacket. Um, and we also use it when we're doing patches. We do a lot of patches on that. So that'll help to minimize the slap you get as it going up and down, which can cause registration issues or actually cause needle breaks even. Yeah, if, if, you, if, if you get too much slap. A lot. Right. Um, the machine comes pre-tensioned for you because we service it here. Uh, we run it through an H test, a trim test, and even on hats. How many, um, how many stitches do you guys sew on these things before they go in? Like a couple hundred thousand? Three hundred thousand before we yeah. actually... This machine, and that's assuming everything is right out of the box. That is correct. You know, sometimes we have to go through and tweak machines because they travel quite a bit to get here, and so they're, they're making sure everything's on. But this, all these machines are going to have at least 300,000 stitches on them before they get to you. Easily. Um, it comes with a uh, cap driver, which is sitting right here. And this is basically, you would take these arms off, Slip this into a slot, tighten these two screws down, and now you've got your cap frame. Uh, there's a button on the machine that you tell the machine to switch from flat to cap. So when you import a job, it'll automatically rotate your design 180 degrees. Um, on the cap frame, it'll allow you to sew close to three inches in height, 
with roughly 14 inches, which is from year to year. Or will it do There's 3D embroidery? Button. Somebody's asking if it'll do yes, 3D Yes, it will. Embroidery. That's what I was just turning around to do right here. Where? Oh, there we go. Oh, my God. We're going to edit. Wait, I we're, saw a we're gonna, Wait. We're definitely going to edit that part out of the video. So <laughs> if you have children in the room, <laughs> it's, it's safe I now. knew I should have worn underwear today. Um, this is a puff <laughs> at Cold Desi that we've, we've done here. And Sean will be glad to show you how to do that when you come in for training. Very straightforward. There was a question that popped up that I wanted to address that Mark kind of just typed away because he's in a hurry to get home. Um, True. But... <laughs> Tony asked a question, and it just it kind of sets maybe a mindset of where some of our customers are who are new to this. Mm -hmm. He asked about, can you just bring in a vector file and send it to an embroidery machine? No, because if you remember in the software we were showing, see all those fill patterns we had? That is all something you generate. But having a vector file allows you to very easily convert to that. All right? These machines are dumb. And I sense that all they do know how to do is the needle goes up and down, and the pantograph goes in and back, out left and right. That's all it does. So you have to tell it what to do in that circular area that is your vector circle. That's why you digitize it and bring it in. However, given the choice, absolutely vector files is the way to go. Back to the puff, yep. real quick. When we do this, is it's a two. This is a two stage. This is actually a yellow that's not puff, and then the black that is puff. So what the machine actually did is it physically sewed out the yellow. And then it paused, and we laid down the, the, this material. You actually see the C and the D are gone from here. And laid it down on this, taped it down, sewed through it, and when it was done, you ripped away the excess. And then we haven't done it to this yet, but the last thing you would do is you would come back and hit this with a heat gun. And what that does, it just tightens up the stitches, and it, it melts any of this foam. You're, this one would have had black foam under it because we have black stitching on top of it. Very easy to do. Uh, Coleman and Company, that Mark mentioned earlier, yep. actually sells a package called Puffy Fonts that has 10 different pre-digitized four puff embroidery fonts that you can buy and use at any point. Now we got two good questions. Could you embroider on a shirt pocket? There's two ways you can do it. The right way and the closed way. Um, <laughs> yes, anything, any type of pocketed item. All yeah. right. What you're going to do is there's special hoops you're going to get there called fast frames that actually slide inside the pocket and hold it open. You can't hoop traditionally because what you will do is you no longer have a pocket or you'll have a segmented pocket because you'll have sewn it shut. Okay, how much training is included? More than you need. No, actually, True. it's if you come to us, you're going to get two full days of training at Live Online. We, we do uh, the self-paced. So we make sure you're up and running. We even now have started doing, every month and a half or so, we're doing educational webinars that aren't about trying to sell you something, uh, even though this one's a little bit more educational than usual. But where Sean might do some type of digitizing, we do the same thing for printers and rhinestones and stuff. So we're doing some more power user webinars as well. Yep. All that training is included, and it's free for as long as you own the machine, and we happen to still be training on it. You can take it again and again. So a couple of really good questions. Uh, if we've got one customer here that wants to do larger height 3D embroidery. Just add more foam. He needs most, All height on most the streetwear designs, which is what I do more of. My screen printing are used, are used to big embroidery on hats. How are you doing them now, Samuel? I'll ask that question. I'll let you respond back to that. There, there's only, you know, unless they're hooping them flat, more than likely those hats are probably being done pre-construction. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're probably being done overseas. So, so what they're doing is they're actually taking those panels, <clears throat> laying them out, puff embroidering them. Then they assemble the hat out of them. Does Correct. the software have fonts that are digitized for puffy? The fonts, the inside of the software, it does not. However, uh, Sean can teach you how to digitize for, for Puff. We also, like I said, there's that package that's sold by Coleman and Company, which is a 10 font set that is already pre-digitized for Puff. And most of them are three-dimensional with, with the outlines like these are as well. Uh, we have, well, heck, even back here. Try not to fall again. Yeah. This was something we did for our, I think it was in late November. For This is actually a 3D that we've done also here on a stocking as well that yeah. we've done with the puff. I mean, the software, you know, it's, it's, the CD has pre-digitized fonts. The software is simply just adding a couple extra stitches and increasing the density mm -hmm. and the satin width to create the puff look. It's saving you time, basically. That's yeah. what, that's what it's doing. But the really software, right. yeah, you can't do it by just digitizing. It takes a little bit longer. Tony says, I keep having to send out files to get digitized. Does this software do that? Yes, it will, if you can learn how to drive it right. Right. I mean, I don't want to overemphasize that this is a magical software. I don't want you to think it is. It's a great software. It's very easy to use. But if you don't know how to embroider, you're not going to be good at digitizing. However, you can pretty quickly get comfortable doing 
especially the simpler job, the ones you're spending 20 bucks for that you could probably do in 10 minutes yourself, very quickly pick up on those. And if you're learning how to do this, I'll generally encourage people to send their jobs out and periodically take the jobs they're sending out and compare your work to the work that comes back from the professional. Good You'll idea. find you shorten that learning curve up a lot. Samuel says he's not doing hats now. That was just... Uh, that was about the, the, the big Yeah, puffies, yeah, the big right? hats. You know, let me, you know, let me address this, Samuel. One way you could do it. You could actually do a puffy um, patch and then heat apply that patch. So right. if you wanted to, you could do a puff font on a patch and then cut it out, and then you, you you could actually heat apply that, and it would have that same impact. That would be another way you could do it. That just came to me while we were talking. Another question, can you embroider on the back of the cap? Yes. You don't traditionally do with a cap a one of the round hoops. Actually, what you would do is you would just pop the hat open, and I would take the smallest hoop, our 9-millimeter hoop, 9-centimeter hoop, and I would hoop the back of the hat like that, right? That's the way most people would do it. If you wanted to, to go a little bit larger and Arian, you don't feel like you get a hoop in. The Fast Frame 7 and one actually does have a hat hoop back as well that you use using that. But most people just use this 9. Because most time it's just a... What's what that? is Fast Frame 7? Fast Frames is, is a, the, as I was describing about for pockets, Fast Frames is a, instead of a hooping system, it's actually a metal frame that has an adhesive backing you put on it that you would slide it in and you want it to press down. So it's not being pinched like it would be in a hoop. It is something that would be held by an adhesive. You don't want to do it on really heavy items because it can tend to come loose. But if you're doing lighter items like a hat or a pocket, and, and some people even use it like on, collar, on sleeves and collars and stuff like that where they don't want to try to, to get a, a burn that you might get from a hoop on an oddball. Sean, is that covered in training, like doing pockets and things along those lines? Everything. Yes. Okay. Understand that you guys drive training too. When you're here, you ask questions of Sean, and Sean's going to answer. That's the beauty of it. And the same thing you get when you're on our live online. You're going to see the questions that the other people are asking, and you're going to learn more because you're involved in a group. What state is the training in? Don't Con say confusion. Confusion. Ah! <laughs> nice. In Sean's case, it would be stoned. No. Oh, no, um, ouch. What state? Uh, we, we, we have two Colorado. locations for the, the statements. Of the, I'm going to go ahead. And, I'm going to go ahead and shoot myself mm -hmm. right now. Um, we we hold training here in Tampa, Florida. We also have an office in Ocean, New Jersey, where we train. However, um, wh where are you at, Tony? What state are you at? And how many days of training is offered? That's Two days of training. Follow. Two days. You're in New York, so you're not far from Ocean. Um, but you don't even have to do that. Ninety plus percent of our customers nowadays are taking these live online training for our, all of our commercial, our DTG printers, our single head embroidery machines, our smaller cams machines, and our Spangle machines. In fact, we never train people here in the office. Seem like on Spangle, right. and very seldom. You know, we sell 30, 35 of these machines a month. On an average month, we might run six companies through for yeah. cla for classroom training mm -hmm. and those are people who are in New Jersey and Florida exactly yeah. and, and and he speaks a lot slower and yeah, that's yeah, true he this speaks is true. slower <laughs> hey it's uh, we've been talking for 51 minutes if I would have talked at the speed you want me to we'd be here till 10 how many people are usually in a live training class um on average probably six uh, three to six. I would say four yeah well I'm saying six yeah yeah six people usually we're if we're having Forced to be the max. You have four companies. But honestly, the, the nice part about the live online training is that you're standing next to your Avance. The minute you're done, if you come in here for training, it's hard to explain this to people because I'm hands-on, right? Sean and I are here, and Sean's from some company in Walla Walla, Washington, and I'm here from some cool place like Tampa, Florida, and we're in training class together. We're sharing this machine, right? That's correct. If, if Sean would have taken the live online training and I was taking it, I would be next to my machine, he would be next to his machine, and it is instructor-led, and mm -hmm. the, the beauty of it is, is every time it's the same because it's structured based on PowerPoints, it's structured based on videos. That's a huge bonus. You know, you go up here, are, are you showing them on screen now? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is our, over. this is the one of the our greatest assets here, which is, this is our support site, and this is where you've gone into the training section that shows you right here. Go to, uh, go to our, no, go, go to, okay, self-paced is fine. Self-paced for the Avance. This is basically the structure that we use. It's a PowerPoint, but this is the same outline that John, who does our online training, uses for all the things. And you go through, and the cool thing is, is this is accessible to you 24-7. So when you're, you're up late at night, you know, you can't sleep on a Saturday night, go, how did I set my tensions? Bang. Right. You can either call Sean, I'll give you his cell phone number, 
or you can go up to this and go right into the PowerPoint and go into that section. And there are and section. there are videos. There, yeah. there are videos, there are tests, and you can take this as many times as you want. So I mean that's all available to you. There are tests all the way through it. And when you're doing the live training, the test, John uses that to gauge how he trains. Right. If he if you go through it shows you that there's ten people in the class and seven of them missed a question. He's going to dig in there and he's not going to let you guys escape and move on to the next section until he's made sure that everybody's comfortable with that section of the training. Huge part of it. Any other questions? You know, we got to do, you know, this so machine. We haven't sewn yet. <laughs> so something other than me has got to make noise. Pam, Pam said start? she needs the cell number for the 2 a.m. training. We don't um, train on that stuff anymore, Pam. We it's used to, it's but Ed Steele. <laughs> Pam, you probably already have that number. All right, we've loaded the design, Sean's traced the design out. We're just going to let you see that it does so. And then we'll answer your question, Peter. I'll read it, Peter, section one. I'll get up here closer so you guys can see. I'm trying to, I can see myself. There we go. Um, Peter was asking about automatic attentioning. Automatic tensioning is, I don't know how to say it, <coughs> um, it's, it's just mythical, all right? The machine may try to play with tensioning. The reality is, if you're not changing your thread, there's not a lot of difference you're going to need to make in the tensioning. The machine come out tensioned for the, for the, the thread that we sell, and you know you change to another poly thread, you tweak it a little bit, and you just leave it there. Now, if you are wanting to do metallics like you asked, what you would do is you would maybe choose little 15 and set that up to do metallic, set your tensioning properly on that, and let it go. That's all you really do, need to do for it and not worry about changing. Ch tensioning is not something you're going to change from top job to job. There, we're slowing it down so you can hear us. Lorraine, um, Lorraine has a question. Do you hold your live online classes in Canadian? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It actually says from Canada, yeah. but, there. but I, I'm in Germany. We'll right. No, actually, yes, we, we, we do, but not. You can get, you can sign up for it. There's not a classroom there, but you absolutely can sign up. We've actually had people buy these machines in Africa, in other countries, and they just sign up. Not so bad for you. You're in Canada. You're on the same time zone as we are, right? If you happen to be in Nigeria, you are taking your training awful late at night. But we absolutely do. You can sign on and take it as well. We sell these machines all over. The, the world, but specifically a lot in North America, Canada, yeah. Central and South America, and here in the U.S. All right, so how often are the live classes? Typically we run them at least once a month in Tampa, once a month up in New Jersey. Um, it really has to do with demand. If we get a point where way early on we see a, a month fills up, we'll throw another live training class in there as we have time during the month. But it's not something that we frequently have to do that. But you're looking at, you ought to be either going to New Jersey or Tampa once a month, easily. Uh, do you have to thread the needles or is there an automatic threader? Literally, the machine's going to come to you with the thread. Thank you! <laughs> the machine's going to come to you with thread all the way through the system, so it's not like you have to thread all the way through this because it's scary, right? That's what those scary things we talked about. What you do is you cut. Here, Sean. I wanted like, oh look, oops, that thread broke. Yeah, oh, right? So Go ahead. what you would do you can't stand in front of them though. Is what you would do is when you're going to change threads out, literally what you, I just did there, except you would probably cut it. <laughs> you would cut the thread, put the new spool of thread on, and you're just gonna tie a square knot, and Sean's gonna be a smart aleck because he actually can tie a knot that'll actually pull through the needle. I like he turns his back to you and says, and the miracle occurs, and poof. <laughs> right? All right, so there you go. Sean just pulled that through. So you're not really very often you have. And to yes, by the, the way, he does still still cut the thread with his teeth. Yes, yeah. we can. We cannot yeah, train you, Brian, your text not to do that. Okay, the hammering in the machine. How much vibration and noise is it loud enough to affect close neighbors? My studio is on the second floor, and I have vendors from another company below me. You're not a problem. What you want to do is number one, the machine's pretty quiet actually compared to most commercial machines. Um, what you want to do is you want to take the machine. And you want to put pads underneath of the wheels, like uh, carpet. That will help you immensely. It, it, that really is what cuts down a lot on the sound is the vibration. But we have people who run these things in all kinds of tight, tight environments. Yeah. 
And it's, they're not that loud. We hit, you can run a forehead in a room that's a moderate size and still be able to talk. I mean, think about these. These are this is quieter than most machines that run in the mall. We also have to be fair. Understand, we're recording this, and this is web-based. I'm six feet away from a microphone. These are hypersensitive microphones that we right. run in here, so that we don't have to wear mics on us while we're in doing these. Does the design pad on the side work the same as the SWF? More or less, yes. I mean, the functions are all the same, Pam. Um, it's it's just a different. So, you know, if you've learned on an SWF, you're going to just have to relearn on this. For people who've started on this. It's, it's the same curve that you went through when you didn't know how to use your SWF pad, but it's very much the same. You know, okay. You're know, you inputting your design, you're setting your sew sequence, you're, you're doing design. your trace, that's it. Okay, we are, um, we're pushing up against 8 o'clock. Let's get that last round of questions, if you have any more questions for us before we... Did he have to put the thread through the eye of the needle, or is there a needle threader? No, actually, what it was is he actually tied off, and he tied a knot that pulled right through. That's why he, he turned around and gave me the smug smile. Um, <laughs> that pulls right through the needle hole. If what? not, you can just run it right through. Again, big difference. This is a mindset difference between commercial and home. Okay. All right? Is people, these nice little features that they put in are all the things that are going to break on the machine. When right? you're running it constantly. And, and are they're all the things that are going to cost a lot of money to fix, and they're all the things in the real scheme of things that are meaningless. And it, it is, as you said, you do not very often, if you break a needle, if you get a thread break, you're going to have to go through and thread a needle. It's it's simple. Once you've done it, that's why they put the light behind it, so even blind guys like me can see it. <laughs> okay, my current SWF machine I bought from you breaks threads a lot. How does this machine compare? Well, probably not the machine. Could be digitizing. I mean, if the machine's in time right, right? You're saying you're breaking threads or breaking needles? Threads. Threads. I mean, getting thread breaks, it could be burrs, too. It could be burrs. Mm -hmm. um, out of timing, tensions, the way right. it's digitized, too thick, too heavy. What comparison oh. is there between this and the baby lock? <clears throat> Which baby lock are you looking at, Pam? It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, ours is better. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, everything that I described in the first 10 minutes where Mark kept trying to shut me up, Yeah. that was about the baby lock and the brother machines. You know, that's the, the big things, your investment is long term, the cost of the machine is actually less by the time you add all the goodies you have to add onto their machine. Uh, and it's upgradable, guys, for two years. You want to swing? Mark, let's swing and show them what they can get in two years. Oh, yeah. And in two years, what you're going to be able to do is trade up from that single head, all right, to you're going to see two of the four heads, I think. You're going to be able to no, no, we're going to, we're going to get all, all the way around all right. there. We're going to get Alex again there really go, quick. There, there he is. Okay, we got Alex again. You did that, by the way. <laughs> You're going to be able to trade up to this machine, a forehead machine. And why is that a good idea, Don? Because forehead is better than one. Okay. Hey. Commercial embroidery, again, we got to think outside the box. You guys are not your our traditional embroiderers, you know, apparel decorators. People don't recognize it. This forehead machine is going to produce four times as much work this well in the same time. Because so... Four of the same item at the same time, you get four times as much done at less than three times the cost. And, I mean, if you're done with the machine for the night, it's simply just the button back here on the back of the machine. Boom. Push it. Just simply done. the machine off. Done. And uh, I'm going to ask one question. Mike, any relation to Kenny? No, oh, John, by the way. Yeah, Scott makes a good point that forehead oh. has the same labor cost as a one head. It really does. And you know, Mike is not related to Kenny Chesney, so uh, there's no question. free tickets. Just a question. There, I don't, there no, was a trade in Mike the works. Is, you there. trained Mike. There was a trade in the works there. Mike trained. Uh, hey, Mike, how you doing? Um, uh, you know, he wishes he was related. Wishes he was related. Wishes he was related. A lot of cases, All right, right? Pam, does the forehead show individual designs the same design? Uh, only the same design at one time. All right, you only have one set of electronics, four set of mechanics on the on the machine. Yeah, think about it. If it takes if it takes 12 minutes to sew out a design, you get to do four designs in 12 minutes instead of just one. Bingo. And, and with a lot of space, the table times. was in front of it. You can have everything already hooped up. So as soon as the machine stops, you jump, pounce, pounce out, throw the next set in. Because if it ain't making noise, it ain't, it ain't making, making money, money, right? Yeah, so we want to get the machine. I stop. had to get it in. Bang! There we go. Right. What happens when a thread breaks halfway through the job? Uh, good question. The machine stops. This light right here, which Sean turned off right now, um, is green while the machine's active and live. But when there's an error state, i.e., the machine has quit sewing,
because this wheel is not spinning anymore. It's going to stop and wait for you to come back and fix the thread break. Uh, you're also going to find you're going to have a bobbin out or a hung up bobbin. Sometimes bobbins get wound in on themselves. And if it's not pulling, it's not spinning this wheel within five stitches, it's going to stop. You're going to fix the issue. You're going to hit the stop button. Every time I hit that, I'm going back stitches. There we go. Sorry, got it going too fast. But it backed up with those stitches and it'll still right over top of that break. All right, there's See actually none. nobody. Okay. See none. Going once. Going twice. Twice. Gone. Hey, thank you all for taking time out to be here with us tonight, checking out the Avance, learning a bit about the software, maybe laughing a little bit. We enjoy doing these for you guys because we want you guys, number one, understand we're real people here. Uh, we like to have a good time, but we're really serious about helping you, you grow your business, and uh, we hope that you give us the opportunity to work with you on it. Most of you all probably, Mark's already sent out, all the people registered have been assigned to some account managers. You'll probably be hearing from your account managers. If you need to reach out, just go to our website and say, hey, I attended, you know, click on one of the lead forms. I attended the webinar last night. Please have my account manager contact me, and we'll be glad to help you out. Thank you all. You guys have a great Memorial Day weekend. Good night. Take care. Good night.